When you have no time and even less motivation, keeping fit can feel impossible. But I have some simple, sustainable tips that helped me go from a fitness fear to fitness. Okay, well, maybe not fanatic, but fine, I'll do it. Here is how to exercise regularly, even when you really don't want to. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Nora from How To Get Your Shit Together and I help you get organized, get motivated and get fit, apparently. Now, if you are like me, you're busy and the thoughts of adding something else to your plate really does not appeal, especially if it's something that's going to take a lot of energy. But we all know we should take our health more seriously. That is why I challenged myself to exercise every day for 30 days. So if, like me, you much prefer being curled up in the fetal position over holding pigeon pose, here's how to make exercise easier. The first thing to do is to figure out your why and none of this, oh, because it's good for me and I really should do it, nonsense. I'm talking, I have a child and I want to live long enough to see her grow up. Or I don't want to be in pain every day for the rest of my life. Or I want to know what it feels like at least once in my life to be strong and healthy. Those are actually my personal motivators. My daughter is five and if I don't look after my health, I won't be there for her for as long as I could be. Having suffered from postnatal depression, I have spent a lot of time in recent years focusing on my mental health, but the truth is that my brain and my body, the same as yours, are a team, so I need to make sure that they are working together because if one of them is suffering, it affects them both, which is why I stress eat sugar. I have also been in quite a bit of pain in recent years. A lot of doctor visits, a lot of tests, a lot of medication, even a few trips to the emergency room. Nobody knows what is causing my pain, but getting my body fit and strong and healthy will surely, hopefully, have a positive effect. And yeah, I don't want to die wondering what it would have been like to have abs. That's not how it's gonna go down. I mean, I don't need a six pack, but I will happily take a heyday Britney Spears body. It'd be a shame not to at least try, no? The next thing to do is to figure out when you can fit fitness in. When are you most motivated? When do you have the most energy? How does exercise make you feel? Now, I don't know about you, but I am not one of these weirdos who feels all energized and jazzed after a workout. Nope, I just want to pass out on my pillow. Thank you very much. So ideally, I would work out in the evenings before bed. But kids and dinner and family time bath time and bedtime. So for the most part, I suck it up and try and squeeze in a morning workout. If I can't, then I try and go for a walk in the evening after dinner. Look at your schedule and find out when makes most sense for you. There is no point in trying to schedule a workout, you know, when you are, when you know you will feel rushed or when you will already be fit to collapse, like right after work. So be realistic. But Laura, I hear you ask, I don't have a set time that I can work out or any time at all. I hear ya and I've got two solutions. The first is to fit it into your normal day. You're going to be going upstairs anyway, right? Might as well run up. Picking up toys all day long? Squat. Bending over is for suckers and it's bad for your back. If you like to spend quality time with your family in the evening, maybe suggest that you all go for a walk together or go to the playground or jump on the trampoline. Hop off the bus one stop earlier and walk the rest of the way. Mop the floors like you're doing the mambo with Ricky Martin. When you are going about your normal activities, just try to do them with a little bit more enthusiasm, a little bit more energy. Pop on some music if it helps. Just put a little more spring in your step. And hey, skipping isn't just for kids, you know. The next way to do it is to look out for those little pockets of time. Ad breaks are perfect for this. Do people still watch ads? Even just watching TV or waiting for something to boil, waiting for the microwave to ding, or scrolling through social media, even while swishing mouthwash. Anytime you would normally be sitting or standing around killing time. Now you can kill some calories. Squats lunges, jumping jacks, push-ups, crunches, even just standing or strolling around instead of sitting. 
It's no hour long gym session, but it is still great for getting your heart rate up and keeping you healthy. The next thing I did was to keep my workout clothes beside my bed. If you are lazy like me, you will want to eliminate as many steps between you and exercise as possible. Have your gear right beside you, including underwear, socks, sports bra, and shoes. And then all you have to do is fall out of bed and into your fitness gear. Or some people even sleep in it, minus the shoes. But don't underestimate how much this one tip will help you. If you are not going to be working out first thing in the morning, then just make sure that you have your workout gear right beside you wherever you are. So it's as easy as possible to put it on and go. Wear it under your clothes if you have to. Once the gear's on, it's easier to get going. Okay, you're up and you're dressed. Now what? What should you do? What should you be focusing on? If you're really not sure what kind of workout routine to follow, then set yourself a schedule. Maybe you have, I don't know, like movement Mondays, where every Monday you do some form of cardio, whether that be running or walking or whatever. Or top half Tuesdays, where you focus on, you know, your arms, your shoulders, chest, back. Or waist down Wednesdays, when you focus on your glutes and your legs. Glutes is just a fancy word for your arse. Or stretch Sundays, where you focus on yoga or just some other form of gentle stretching. Whatever, I'm just making up random things here. But when you have a schedule or some form of like rotation or regimen, it is so much easier to just get up and go. You will know exactly what you need to do. There's no guesswork, there's no stalling. Just get to it. When you are working out your schedule, and this is something I've already hinted at, but take a holistic approach. Try to hit all of the main muscle groups at least once per week and also get some cardio in there too. But there is no point having Popeye's arms and olive oil's legs or being super strong, but not being able to run from here to there without passing out. Look after all of you. Now, once you get good at something, your body will rest on its laurels and you won't be able to see the same results. So you need to switch it up. If you've been doing crunches for a while, try planking. If you've been going on long, slow jogs, try some short sprints or some cycling or, or dancing. There are so many ways to keep your body fit and healthy. So if something is not working out for you, if something is starting to feel a little bit stale, try something else. Even if it's something that you don't think you will like, give it a go. Look up some routines online just to get some ideas. But if you keep things fresh and exciting, you won't get bored. Good relationship advice also. Okay, so you've got a bit of a schedule going, you're switching things up. What should you remember? to take breaks. Allow yourself time to rest and recover. I did a pretty big bench pressing session recently and the next day my arms were in bits. And I thought to myself, I'm sure that kind of hair of the dog thing will just transfer over into health and fitness. I'll do a quick session again today and that will help me get over the pain. No. There is a reason that I say to rotate your exercises and to switch things up and also why I've suggested stretching Sunday. Exercise puts stress on your body. Now little bits are fine the same way a little bit of stress in your day to day is not going to take a huge toll on your mental health but prolonged stress you're heading for the hospital. If something is sore rest it let it heal that is how you get healthy through the cycle, not the one way street. We talked a little bit earlier about how to make things as easy as possible on yourself and also how the body works as a whole. One thing that I find is that after I have exercised, I am much more inclined to eat healthy foods. And the reverse of that is also true. If I eat junk food, I am not going to be in peak condition to be doing a physical activity. Keep healthy snacks on hand. I know how easy it is to reach for things that are packaged and processed, but make it just as easy to reach for fruits and vegetables. Have them all ready prepped because when you are eating healthy, you will feel healthier and in turn, you will feel much more motivated to move your body. And after you have moved it, there is a little point in filling yourself full of junk. Don't cancel out all the good of your sweat session by eating crap. 
Also, make sure that you stay super hydrated. Dehydration is not a good look for you. Now, I know it's still hard. You still have to be disciplined. You still have to rely on your own willpower to do the work. Well, you can eliminate a lot of that too by setting yourself an appointment, getting yourself some accountability. Find a workout buddy or join a class if it's within your budget and see how much easier it is to stick to something when you have someone else waiting for you to show up. Plus, a good gossip makes the time pass quicker. Speaking of budgets, you don't need some fancy equipment to get your sweat on. There are plenty of things that you already have around your house that will help you get healthy. Use the stairs instead of an aerobic step. Pump iron. Use what you have on hand to build strength and stamina. But be smart and safe. Right, so you are dressed in all the gear, you've got your schedule set up, your good friend Gina is going for walks with you every week. Good woman, Gina. You're doing everything right, but you still feel like there is a final piece of the puzzle missing. Well, just call me the jigsaw genius because I know exactly what you need. Tracking. There is little as demoralizing as not feeling like you are making progress. And believe me, in the day to day when the gains are so small and maybe you're just having an off day, you will feel like this is all just a waste of time and you will want to walk away. But having tracked your progress, you will be able to look back at where you were when you started. You'll be able to see how far you've come. You won't want to break that winning streak when you see it right in front of you. Go back to that time when you couldn't even do a single push-up. And look at you now. That was me a year ago, by the way. <laughs> When I had a personal trainer and I was going to the gym about three times a week, I still never felt like I was making any huge progress. I always focused on the bad sessions and how hard it was. You know, I always found it hard. But before we moved to the US, my trainer gave me the little notebook that he had been using to track my workouts. And going back to page one is eye-opening. I was so puny. Now, you don't have to get really detailed with it. Even something as simple as just ticking a box to say that you have done a workout that day can be really helpful. But if you are including weight training in your regimen, then I would encourage you to at least list down your starting weight and how many reps you can do. I promise you it will be so worth it when you look back and you realize that now you could do that stuff in your sleep. With all of my tips, even if you don't have a gym membership or any fancy equipment or even any great desire to exercise, you should still be able to find lots of small things that you can do every day to keep yourself happy and healthy. Daily exercise is possible and you can get a daily fitness fix even if you have no money and even less motivation. Let me know what your favorite form of exercise is. If health is something that you are really striving for, then I have a video on how I managed to give up chocolate. It has been almost four years, but that is good for any bad habit that you are trying to quit. And until then, Gorev Mila Mahagwev, Agus Vicky Meshif Shigalua. Slon!